Thanks for checking out this movie review video. This is for the 1992 film Hellmaster, and when I'm doing this review, it is available on the Shutter streaming service. That's where I saw it. Now, oh, also, it's a Blu-ray that you can buy if you like this film, in a way. Uh, you can buy it through Vinegar Syndrome. That's who has it. Uh, they actually, Shutter ends up getting a lot of Vinegar Syndrome stuff, just so you know. But anyway, let's get into this crazy, wacky, aimless kind of film uh, that the strongest thing about it is probably that it has John Saxon in it, uh, who unfortunately passed away this year. Um, a guy who had a lot of credits on IMDb, did great job with a lot of his roles, and um, yeah, I'll tell you a few of his main films that I picked out amongst so many, so sad that he was lost this year. Uh, this was written and directed by Douglas Scholes, who did the film's Dark Heaven, Dark Fields, Mimesis, The Dark Below, and Mimesis Nosferatu. I don't know those films, but after seeing this, I might try to look into those, just because, like I said, this is kind of a so-bad-it's-good type film. It's not so bad it's great, but there's enjoyment here. Like, I laughed a good amount of times at how bad some of the stuff was, and uh, yeah... You would think that this was from, like, the 80s, because the 80s just spawned so many of these types of films. Although this film kind of hit the end portion of the straight-to-video that was actually profitable at that point. So it was kind of, like, at the end time frame for that in the early 90s. So, uh, obviously starring John Saxon, who's been in such films as The Evil Eye, Enter the Dragon, Black Christmas, which I love him in Black Christmas... Cannibals in the Streets, I put that one down because I've never even heard of that, sounds like one I need to check out, Blood Beach, that's another one, uh, The Scorpion with Two Tails, which I have heard of and heard is good, it's a giallo film, and also Tenebre which, by uh, Argento, which I have seen and is very good, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, obviously everyone knows that, Nightmare on Elm Street Dream Warriors, which is the third one, Wes Craven's New Nightmare, and From Dusk Till Dawn, so, so much good. Originally, this was titled Them, and you can obviously see that if you watch it on Shudder, because it's called Hellmaster on Shudder, but when you watch the film, the title comes up as Them. So, I don't know if it was just that Vinegar Syndrome changed the title to Hellmaster. Uh, Hellmaster makes a lot more sense as the title, honestly, because of the story in this. The quasi, I mean, there is a story to it, but it's such an aimless thing that... They, there's so much randomness thrown into the story that it, it's not very focused, but there is a base story, and I feel like that base story is better summed up as Hellmaster, especially in comparison to them. Like, that's a terrible title. So the the film begins, and there's a, re there's a quote that just stood out to me that I was just like, oh my gosh, this is like a over-the-top, overused type phrase, a place where nightmares are born, that the... Um, I believe the journalist is is talking about. And the funny thing is this journalist is ends up being like taking on the role of kind of like a typical like vampire hunter type dude. Obviously there are no vampires in this, but you know, vampire hunter type dude. Oh, by the way, spoilers on this since it's an older film and if you haven't seen it just stop here and just know you should see it if you like bad fun movies. So, then you can come back to this. But anyway, um, so yeah, so it just feels weird to me that the journalist is kind of like this vampire hunter dude uh, because he presents the like the drug that he's using to like shoot up the the villains or creatures. I don't even know what to call them, like Hellspawn. I'll call them like Hellspawn kind of because that's kind of what they are, I guess, because the Hellmaster created them. So I'll just call them Hellspawn. So um, he uses this drug to kill them, and it seems like... He knows what he's doing. Like, he's putting this drug together. He knows what he's doing. But he's a journalist. So it's just like, there's so much of those types of things in the film that just, like, doesn't make sense. Doesn't match up. Just like, why is there Tracy's sister there who just keeps popping up randomly all over the place? No one's looking after that kid. Even after they were told, after they were told to look after that kid, the kid just, like, wanders into scenes. Like, where is she in between these scenes? Who's looking after her? Really nobody, because it keeps going to all these people, and no one has her with them, but she just walks into scenes that they're in. So it's like, where is this kid? Why is this kid there in the first place? That's never explained, and it's just like... Randomness. Like, the whole thing is randomness, but that's part of the fun. 
So the opening scene actually gives kind of like a zombie type vibe with um, John Saxon's character, the Hellmaster, uh, being kind of like the overlord of these zombies and mind controlling them. Because, I mean, that is what's basically happening is he's basically killing these people. I, I guess he they are kind of zombies in the sense that he's killing them by injecting them with that drug that then kills them and reanimates them in essence. It makes them kind of mind controlled because you can't, you can't get them unmind controlled by any means other than just killing them. So they basically are like zombies in a sense with more motion and motor skills and all that. Man, they love moving the camera, especially in that scene with the library, which, by the way, that library looks so fake. Like, it, it definitely looked like they set it up to look like a library, not that it looks like a library at all. <laughs> and, like, the, the crazy, the weird color of blue walls in there is also very odd. But when we're in that scene, there's, like, so much just, like, moving around the characters in it that I was just like, this is excessive. What are we doing? But really, other than that, I actually thought the directing was fine, and the cinematography was actually fine. Very, you know, competent. So that stuff's not bad. It's just, like, the script and the acting and the practical effects, too. It's just, like, some of the gore was actually pretty solid, but the practical effects, like, the the makeup for these creatures, these hellspawn, as I'm calling them, looks terrible like it looks awful and you're almost better off not using any of that stuff and instead just putting on a mask or just putting on some color on their face to make them kind of look like zombies because for the most part all you did was just like pad their faces with stuff and you didn't really give them much of any look like they look weird but it's not a good look it's just it's odd it doesn't work so the comment about selling linoleum waterbeds, there was a comment made about that, and I was just like, that really caught me. Such a strange line. There are a lot of strange and awkward lines in this of dialogue, and that one I just thought was hilarious, and I was like, man, that sounds like a good career in the early 90s, selling linoleum waterbeds. It's just so random. So why is Jesse carrying a whip in this? Why is there a whip in this film at all? Another thing to point at of randomness like there's no reason for anyone to actually have a whip like they're at a school like this is kind of like a college type situation I guess because that's never even like fully explained either and also why there's barely any students there that's another thing it's very oddly empty is that because all the other ones were kind of killed and reanimated I don't know a lot of stuff is not explained it's just like this is what's happening because yeah because that's what's happening but the whip, I thought, was very funny because it's so early on that it's introduced and it's so random. And the, But the fact that it doesn't just go away, I like. That they kind of stick with that. The school seems very empty. And yeah, you're just like, what is with this school? What is it like? I mean, I know they say that like they recruit people for like the FBI and the CIA and stuff like that. And there's that aspect of like working on the one character's like psychic abilities or something. So I guess it's kind of like a state seems like state sponsored ish black ops type i don't know i don't know the triple syringe in this is cool i do like the design of that triple syringe thing that people get injected with that's cool i like that idea i also like that um john saxon's character the helm Hellmaster guy has like this like tube hooked up to him that he injects himself with that's never really explained but i think it's kind of funny interesting you spend so much of the beginning wondering what's going on here. It meanders an incredible amount. It's very vague, and vague is just the name of the game with this. Vague in dialogue, vague in, vague in characters, vague in story, vague in what's going on in any given scene. And actually, there are a bunch of scenes where they just happen, and you're kind of like, you feel like you're missing a portion of the film. Like, how did we get here? Why are these people doing this? They haven't said anything about doing this. We didn't see them go here. We didn't see any motivation for them to go here or be doing this. And it's just like, these random scenes, they just happen, and you just, you just walk into them, basically, as an audience member. Jesse's fight with Bobby Razorface, which Bobby Razorface and Joey the Monkey Man, <laughs> like, these names for these Hellspawn are very funny to me. Uh, but Jesse's fight with Bobby Razorface is crazy terrible, but crazy terrible funny 
Because literally, uh, Bobby Razorface is standing still. And Jesse is, like, swinging the uh, nightstick at him repeatedly and missing. And he's not moving. And this is just one of those things of, like, they didn't even care about chore choreographing this fight scene. It's just like, just swing at him. Oh, oh, they, w oh, should he move now? Nah, whatever. We already got the take. Just, just go with it. <laughs> so funny. I like how there's little logic with what people do in this and how characters just end up in places. Yeah, I already talked about that. I feel like the makeup doesn't do much. I already talked about that. The creepy man baby slashing the guy with the mini scythe in the legs, that was actually pretty effective. It was uh, a relatively good kill scene. Uh, it was relatively creepy, and that kind of points to another thing of, um, while the design of these Hellspawn type people is not good, the voice changes that they do for them works because it's kind of funny, but also creepy at the same time. And the fact that Joey the Monkey Man is... Um, kind of sounds like a man baby is creepy it's very creepy and it's weird and it's funny at the same time i like that the building interior and exterior shots are actually really cool that's like the best looking stuff in the film honestly especially like the inside hallway shots like the long shots in the hallway those usually look really good they set those up pretty well other than that it's just eh. um they're indiscriminately killing students, but leave one girl because she can't harm them. Doesn't it seem like they're just killing to kill, basically, at that point? So why would they leave this one person just alive? I think that was Barbara or Betty, the blonde. They just, like, the Hellmaster guys literally just, like, just leave her, like, whatever. And it's like, this doesn't make any sense. They're, like, indiscriminately killing people. It doesn't make sense. Um... Also, what's with the Ten Little Indian song that just keeps being sung over and over and over again? It seems very, once again, very random. It's like the whip. It's super, super random. It gets used maybe like three times and then they drop it. I guess it's maybe used as like a creepiness factor, but it doesn't do that. It just seems odd and, and dumb. Just saying. Uh, one of my favorite scenes, the slow motion of Ra Bobby Razorface walking into the building like his body language like the way he's moving in slow motion and also the fact that he's carrying a hammer and he's like slamming the hammer against his fist and it's making like this clanging noise <clears throat> excuse me which makes no sense that it's making that noise it's just funny and the fact that all that's in slow motion like it would actually have looked decent ish in regular motion but the fact that they chose slow motion makes it way more funny, way more ridiculous, just terrible. Uh, but I love it for that reason. I like the guys in the marionette. I do like that aspect of it. The guy where they had, like, the bolts going through his arms and, you know, they were having him move around. Uh, and then they were dragging him by it later on. I don't want to mess with that a little harsh. And then they were dragging him later on, which, um, yeah, I just like that concept. It was one of the nicer moments of the film. The shot of the smoke in the hallway, when John Saxon's character's standing at the end of the hallway with the big swirls painted in the hallway and then the smoke on the ground, that actually looked really cool. That was a really set up, a really well set up shot, and it looked cool, and I really liked that. But then they start introducing pe the concepts of people's worst fears and illusions and the psychic aspect, which... They talked about the psychic thing early on and then quickly dropped it, and then they bring it back at the very end to, like, actually kind of matter. So it's one of those things of, like, once again, with the randomness, like, you introduce something, then don't say anything about it, it has no significance, then, surprise, it has some sort of significance. But the total introduction of the illusions and the feet playing on people's fears at the very end, it's, like, too little too late. Like, you needed to lay the groundwork. But once again, we're not talking about a good film. We're talking about a ridiculous film. So I just wrote down, pick a concept. Like, pick a concept and stick with it. Finally, this psychic ability means something to the film. Yeah, I had been waiting for the psychic ability thing to come back because they did make a point of it in the beginning, but you just wait too long. <clears throat> the diatribe at the end is horrid. The uh, God being life and evil being mortal whole thing that the diatribe that the lady goes on at the end, so terrible. It made me roll my eyes in so many different ways. And one of the biggest issues is the delivering 
of those lines is so cringeworthy. It is so cringeworthy. Um, the worst line delivery in the film, if you can believe it, in my opinion, at least. And there's a lot of bad line delivery in the film. The music I actually really enjoy in this film, though. The music was a lot of fun. Um, although, it's not as fun towards the end. In the beginning to the middle, it's pretty fun. And then after that, it kind of drops off. Now, this film actually seemed kind of like a mix of, like, Reanimator and Hellraiser. Because um, the whole idea of, like, being a lord of hell, basically, this Hellmaster guy, like, that seems very Hellraiser-ish. And with having, like, his minions that are kind of like the Cenobites, that seems like it was cribbed totally from Hellraiser. And then the whole, like, using drugs, injecting injecting into people and kind of reanimating and stuff like that is much like Reanimator. So I see this Hellmaster guy, John Saxon's character, as, like, an evil, a more evil version of Herbert West from Reanimator, which, you know... Herbert West from Reanimator actually is kind of a villain. He is, he's not a good dude. He's doing bad things. Um, but this is just kind of like taking that and just being like evil. Uh, so he's, yeah. And he's doing it to like create his own religion, basically. Um, so I, I believe there is some kind of like commentary on religion in there. Uh, and it goes, you know, in the way of kind of like questioning religion to a degree and saying like religion is bad. But then also at the end religion is invoked to kind of be the savior of the day although it's not because it's really the psychic abilities that do it i don't know the film is confused like i said like pick a concept stick to it it's not very clear on on things that are going on it's just kind of it's very random you don't watch this film for story you don't watch this film for good acting you don't watch this film for really anything except laughing at it having a fun time, and enjoying John Saxon. Because I do think that for what he was given, John Saxon made the best of the role. He is the best the best acting in it, the best everything about it, pretty much. So, there you go. Uh, so, I'm going to have to rate this two ways. So, if I'm rating it in the pantheon of all film, as like, seriously, i got to give this a one-star rating. But if I'm rating it as, like, a so-bad-it's-good type film, I'm going to give it a three stars. It's not the best. It's not even close to, like, the best so bad it's great. But, you know, it gets over the halfway point, so three stars. Anyway, thanks for checking this out. Put some comments down here, especially if you've seen Hellmaster. Let's talk about that. Uh, do me a quick favor and hit that subscribe button. I really do appreciate it whenever people subscribe. It kind of keeps me going, and I like seeing the growth in the channel. So please do that, and also hit the notification bell if you're going to do that so you know whenever I'm putting up a new video or when I'm doing a live stream. But regardless, thanks for checking this out, and until next time, keep it brutal.